Hello. Oh, thanks for joining us, joining me this evening. <laughs> There's not us. Um, so you are, who are you, I guess, for the recording? <laughs> hey, I'm Cami Cole. I'm the dance and drill team director at Memorial High School. Yes. And I am Sarah Watkins, the person that did your awesome observation, <laughs> which was so good. Let's talk about it. I am going to share my screen. And there's a fancy little thing happening. So um, when I went in, I know just from what I observed, um, and this tiny little thing on the bottom down here about student engagement, it really did seem like um, even though the students had their either laptops or their devices and they're answering questions that really most of your students are participating and I don't it's kind of cut off on my screen but there's a total number of 24 students that I counted and then six of them being virtual and 18 being so I think overall whatever it is you're doing I think you should keep on doing it because they were very engaged <laughs> um, and then just some of the things again that I saw while well, you were providing highlights for the video, watching a video and the students were answering questions on Canvas. And then I know I have this on the notes, but just to kind of ask what, what were the questions that they were watching or what, what were they watching and then what were the questions reflecting that? Um, so we are starting our spring show unit. So this is our big performance at the end of the year. Um, it'll be in April. So this was our dance one class. So they really had no idea what spring show was. So we were starting this unit. So I wanted them to watch the video from two years ago because last year didn't happen. Mm, COVID. Um, so they were watching the video, just kind of see what to expect and what their dance classes were going to do. So the form that they were filling out was a dashboard. So they were answering questions based Based off of the video and then they had to also respond to people so they were interacting in that way um and then the questions that they had were um first was just like an easy face value question so they had to answer like the title of the show to make sure that they were actively engaged right away and got the theme and the title because our show is like very theme based um and then they had to pick their top two dances that they liked um describing costuming um, because costuming element and the performance quality is um, a major part of these dance performances. And then um, they also had to um, describe why it was their favorite. So if they liked formations or they liked the visual effects or the music, they just kind of had to go into more detail. And then the next part, they had to kind of evaluate. So they had to evaluate um, the dances and decide which ones they didn't like um, or which one they thought needed more cleaning and polish before it got on the stage. Um, and this kind of made them think about um, what they wanted for their show dance and like the work that's going to put into it. Um, and then they also want to make sure that their dance isn't the one somebody's commenting about in the next, in the future. Mm -hmm. And then their last part was their goal. So their goal for the dance class, like um, what they want their dance class dance to be like um, and what kind of elements they want to make sure are not in it. So is it clean? Is it polished? Is it ready for the stage? And that kind of stuff. Mm, very good. And they have to they had to do that within that class period. They had that. Yes. Class so period. they had their computers opened and their canvas out. And so they were responding in the dashboard at, like as it was happening. So they were like just making notes as the video was going on. And then they'll submit it at the end of the class where it was about an hour long show. So at the end of the hour, they submitted it and then responded to their classmates. Yeah. So that connects the virtual students to the face to face students. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's probably one of our biggest obstacles in the classroom this year is making sure that those um, virtual kids feel engaged and integrated into the lesson. And then that was another part, like right at the start of the class, we kind of talked about what the dates are and what they ha are required to buy. And then they also went a step further this year and had to also decide if they wanted to be in show where in the past, like it's just required unless you're failing a class, it's required for you to be in the show and be at these performances. But um, the in-person students, they had, they were told they had to discuss this with their families and um, sign off on it. But if they wanted to do it in person or if they would rather do a virtual element and then same thing with the virtual students, the district hasn't really come out with if that's going to be allowed. Mm -hmm. um, we have had banned people able to come to in live or live performances. So I just wanted to see like right now before the district makes any decisions, like where their every families are at and see if like they wanted to just stay virtual or because those practices would be after school um, if they would be able to come onto campus for that. So it's kind of giving me a gauge of where 
the comfort level is in each family. And so when I'm setting forms and things like that, I can start figuring out how that will work with all the different kinds of classes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So before I came in there, that's what y'all had been doing. Y'all have been like talking about it, dishing it out, all the things, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they had a kind of, I told them that was like their homework. So they had to take care of that with their families um, before, or like that was their homework. So they had to kind of discuss it make sure that their families are on the right, are on the same page because I mean, it's a weird year. And so this year you have to kind of take things into consideration that you normally wouldn't have to. And if they don't participate in the spring show, um, is there an alternative assignment then? Yeah. So I haven't fully um, vetted that out just yet because yeah, it hasn't really said anything. So um, I told them right now that they are expected to learn the same routine um, and they would just be submitting a video. And then it's my goal to do like a virtual show as well. So there would be QR codes at the um, actual show for people to look at during intermission. And so they'd be able to watch the virtual kids do their spring show during intermission um, through like a recorded video. So they're all together working, like they're all yeah really being seen right yeah yeah um well I think I think all of that there's a lot of it's a lot to think <laughs> so many things <laughs> to think about this year that we don't normally have to think about um I know differentiation in this lesson so you're you're visualizing it and you whenever I walked in you were highlighting like specific things like hey we'll make sure you watch this or whatever were there times that you stopped the video and uh, and like pointed out something or was it just kind of continuous because of the time frame? Yeah, since the show was pretty much the same time frame as the class period, and we had some technical issues to start out with, um, I just kind of kept it playing. But there was MCs in between dances, kind of leading up to the next one, and so that was when I would take the opportunity to talk about it. Um, so there's a lot of girls that are trying out for the dance team in that class, so I'd like highlight different things for those girls that are interested, and then I would also make sure to make a point. There's like two dance one classes that were in the show, and mm -hmm. so I would tell them like this is a dance class, dance one class. Um, like one was probably a little bit lower than that class. Um, like that class that you observed is right. pretty um, highly technical, so they would have a more advanced dance. So I told them like this is dance one. This is kind of the framework, but yours would be a little bit harder and a little bit faster. So they have comparison, right? Between. Yeah. And I think um, even though I came in at the end of endish of the class, um, you definitely there's routines established. Everyone had their shoes off. Everyone was very, like I said earlier, engaged and um, everything was very relevant. <clears throat> class routine. And then objective and no one had any questions about like what they're supposed to be doing. They're all doing things. And I put like teacher makes, makes it clear for the importance of the spring show um things that just I have to remind myself as well but putting them out there like trying to think about new ways of doing stuff so one thing that I thought of that could be helpful maybe is doing a flipped right a flipped kind of classroom with this um mindset or whatever having them watch it on their own time um and then having them kind of talk about like then they bring out bring back their highlights in class and then you kind of go over it that way but um, I know this way you're ensuring that they're all of them are at least have seen it one time because if we do homework like that, they don't always do it, but that's just one thing to kind of consider, I think. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, um, breaking up the video with uh, different activities too. So like, I know, I know we have, we have our canvases, um, and I know you use different things like Flipgrid, you're a technology person, but like, I don't know, just other ways of breaking it up. So it's not just a big, I mean, it is nice to have a video day after like some rigor rigorous training things that we've had but um you know just bit different ways of of figuring out assessing what their knowledge is and like quick feedback like you know talk with your amongst yourself and then this group what what is the highlight from this dance or whatever or if, if there were more time i guess allowed it to it and then you did say this already but timeline for the unit and expectations like um clearly i'm a visual person and so i try to I try to post as much things and like visual, like this is your calendar. This is your, you have this many class periods and this is whatever, like, do you have something like that for them? Um, not laid out by a week. They just know spring shows in April. And um, I told them like, we're going to be like learning the dance at first. And then, um, then we kind of like break it up where they go into like a stage 
um, lesson. So they learn about different parts of the stage, different parts of the audience, performance quality, like what what is the apron part of the stage, like things like that. So they'll go into that stuff and then we'll go back into cleaning and polishing the routine and making sure it's performance ready. So we kind of talked about that, but we didn't go weekly. So that's a good idea to kind of let them see how much time they really have before that performance in April. Yeah, I mean, with artists, it's really important for, for them to value their time because if they sell something for $100, but they put 100 hours into it, then they basically only pay themselves a dollar an hour. And so then having them to think about those things, I think is ultimately the hardest thing. But for dancers, I think like I have this much time to learn this and then I need to also figure out how to lurk, be on the stage at this much time. And then, I don't know, like, cause y'all's dances, how long is a dance on the stage? Like how long are they performing? Um, for a dance one class, it's about a minute 45 to two minutes. Yeah, but then they practice a whole lot. <laughs> but yeah. a minute 45 yeah. and, minutes. and there's like parts and levels. So it's like dances within dances. So yeah. nobody's really performing the same dance. So that's what takes the most time and making sure they look like little clones of each other on the stage. And as much just, as dance one could be. You're right, right. And then I, just as a random thing, like you have, do you have a stage person, like a person running or is there a person in the class, each class that's like the leader? Yeah, so each dance class will have a dance class captain and they're responsible for all the backstage stuff because on show day, I'm already, I'm running a lot. So there's a leader or it's honestly, it's probably shared between two people, especially at dance one. Um, and so they're responsible for making sure everybody's dressed on time. They check attendance. So I send my managers for the dance team around and they go and ask each captain, um, like if everybody's there and everybody's prepared and ready and wearing the right thing and has their makeup on. So they kind of do a full check. And then they're also responsible for the backstage stations. So I have them do um, like a count station, um, a str or stretch stations first, then counts, then music, and then they're on deck. So they have four stations before they're actually on stage. So that that just ensures for dance one that they're just not like goofing off in the background and they're actually taking care of their bodies, making sure their performance ready. They're focused on what's supposed to be happening. Um, and so the weeks leading up to show, we do that. So we're no longer stretching and practicing in the dance room. We're actually in the hallway where they'd be um, doing the stretching station to stretch. And then, so that way they really get the drill before they get on stage. And so nothing is questioned or they're never unsure of anything. They know what to do. Like we even talk about like what dance is on stage when you need to be in this station, what dance is on deck when you need to be in this station. So they know like the order of things and the captains are responsible for making each, making sure each station is happening. Yeah. Awesome. There's so much, there's so much. Um, so adding to that, the safety of this year. So the protocols for this year, I know they've changed so much. Um, like wearing a mask, but then still staying within this amount of feet, but then now as long as you're wearing a mask, all the things. So for a show, what is like the major yeah. differences that you have to do this year versus other years? So again, the district hasn't really oh, broken down the guidelines for that. Yeah. Um, but what I'm expecting is normally I would have all the dance classes in the dance room and having different areas, which that's not realistic for their dressing room or their hangout area. So each dance class will have a different a room around the fine arts wing. Slash walk-ins, get ready. I'm gonna be asking for that of you. Yeah, okay. Um, so like a dance class would just be in there, just hanging out until their first station, and so they'll be expected to wear their mask during this whole time. So they'll be expected during getting dressed, getting ready in their different rooms, um, having that on the whole time and through the station. So stretching counts, music, and on deck. So they have to be on there. For the drill team this year, we would have to wear a mask at any point until we are actually on the field so or on the performance floor so um like as we are walking out they can take the mask off and perform that way and then put it right on as soon as they start leaving um so i'm thinking that'll be the same guidelines for dance class and of course it's going to be at their comfort level so if some girls just are not comfortable taking their mask off which honestly they have not all year so in dance class we wear a mask the whole time right. so they may not be comfortable and that is completely fine I might just tell them they all have to get like a black mask and that way they're all at least looking the same. Right. Um, and then the ones that want to take it off, if the district is allowing that at that time, then that would be okay. Um, and then my managers have already been instructed that every after every two performances, they have to kind of fog the stage with this um, sanitizing stuff just to make sure everybody is still staying safe and all of that. Yeah, yeah. Because like, that's what I was thinking. Like, are there we, because our band, whenever they were performing, they all had the, 
like the show air quotes air the show one and then the, in class they had the one with the little pockets where they're they're still wearing a mask but then it's just and then of course the instruments have that had that shield too right but like whenever y'all are performing and it's not on the field but then now on a smaller space but still yeah still close capacity like those are those are fun yeah so luckily dance classes are smaller this year just because there's virtual kids and so they would probably be able to get spread out at least six feet if not 10 so we would be spread out there D a drill team it's a little bit different story but they've been practicing in that way and then the dances that they actually like touch and engage they have something called a gator and they pull up for that performance during those times that they're touching and then they'll take it off when they're not um as far as the audience goes because that's been a concern um any of the other financial performances this year the audience capacity has been 25 percent and mm -hmm. so i'm thinking that they'll probably keep that going with us again we haven't gotten guidelines so that's just kind of what i'm prepping for yeah. so with that it's probably just going to be the drill team which is the ones that are funding this thing um mm -hmm. that are going to be allowed to go and then dance three four which is our upper level dance that has our seniors mm -hmm. and then color guard which is another performance group on our campus that uses the flags and so they would be the ones to have actual audience member and they would have like a restricted number they got to go um and then that way we would set the audience like they would have a spot to go to um and we'd make sure everybody was spread out so that's what i'm oh, thinking I'm is going to be happening and then all of, like the dance one class that you looked at um they've been told that their parents would be able to watch virtually so they wouldn't necessarily have a family member there but we would have that virtual element that the district set up for our auditorium for them to be able to watch okay yeah like the live stream mm -hmm. option. yeah yeah and then no concessions no no none of that well you never really have done that well i mean i say we never have but there's been three years of our campus and one of the years is this year and the other year was covid so the one show that we've had <laughs> We did not do concessions anyways, because we didn't want to deal with like the cleanup and we didn't know if it was really going to make that money. And that first year we weren't going to invest in things that we weren't sure we were going to get a profit out of because we didn't have that much finances and booster. So we didn't do it and we didn't see like a need for it. So that was already out of like the cards anyways. So we're just not going to do that for sure. So just it's 17 minutes, but just uh, two questions. One was still directly related to show and then another one just kind of like what would be the next thing i would walk in through but show okay. how many performances are there like how many show nights or days or things so there's two nights there's a friday show and a saturday show the show is about an hour and 20 minutes and 20 of those is our end of the year like video that happens for the drill team girls and then it's kind of also a dressing time for the seniors to get dressed for the finale kick um so as many prefer <laughs> It's hard to say like how many performances. I think it's a probably 12 in act one and 15 or 16 in act two. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, and, then and, then how, and this year we do have more color guard participation. Our color guard director, um, I mean, they're a part of the dance department and the show is dance department. So I've always asked them to be a part of it. And this year they are, they're missing out on a lot more performances. So he wanted to make this a big thing for his winter guard. So they would have this at the end of the year as well. That's good. Good job. Um, okay, and then so this was day one of your lesson, and there was a lot that you covered. You're observing. You're looking at other things, and so then moving forward this week, what are y'all doing in this class? So they're gonna start learning their show dance. So they've kind of gotten a hint of their song with the forms that they've had to fill out and the, <laughs> the items that they have to purchase on their own. Um, so this is when they're gonna really start learning that routine. And um, when they do learn it, I'm gonna set them in a formation and they just have, to, and I'm, I tell them that this isn't permanent. They have to like basically try out for the spot, but it's not like um, you don't get it in the routine. It's mm -hmm. just some people may dance too much like one another. So I have to kind of move them around. Um, so they're gonna start learning things and this is gonna integrate all the technique we've been building throughout the year in class. After we stretch, we go straight into technique. So those things will be in the actual performance. So. I always tell them like we're growing and you want this to be better and better each time because it's going into show. So this is like their final like evaluation of their technique that they've been working on. So they do they have ownership of their own show? Like did they make their 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 dance or is that something only upper level? Yeah. So yeah, that's an upper level thing. So dance one, I take 
full control of it. And so they, it's just basically to help highlight those technical elements and making sure they're ready for like stage performance, getting in front of an audience member. Um, but for upper level dance two, will get about um, four to six, eight counts, depending on the choreography that's happening to kind of design on their own. And they also can, they also come up with the idea. So I'd sit down with them. I'm like, this is what your song is. What are you seeing? And then I make sure I put that in there um, when their dance is happening, but dance three, four, they are responsible for their show dance. So I tell them like, you're not left alone. I'm not going to leave you to it, but at, you got to design it. So if they come up with something, I'm like, that's great, but that needs to be in parts. So then they can kind of figure out parts or like this would probably be best in this formation. So let's try to make that happen. So I'm just there to help guide them through the process and help them see things that, you know, that as new choreographers, they maybe wouldn't see and making sure they like get the best thing for the stage. Yeah. I mean, that's similar in our format. Like I like upper level art. They need to set up their own still life. They need to set up their own stuff. And then beforehand, I need them to experience it. But then I'm here to guide them. But ultimately I'm still the, you know, the, the okay or the approver of whatever's happening. Like, no, go try this again. But so similar, I guess, in that. Um, okay. Do you have any questions on this beautiful form that I've created? <laughs> um, no, uh, I did take away a lot. Like I like the flipped classroom idea or at least breaking it up so mm -hmm. that maybe we could, instead of doing it all in one day and they can have a little more discussion. And then, um, uh there's something else and i missed i forgot what you said uh but yeah you gave me some good stuff to think about and kind of build on this lesson for the following year yay excellent well thank you so much i'm going to stop recording in just a moment but i appreciate your time yeah thanks for coming in yeah let me i don't know how to stop stop stop